This is the Nexus Special, Episode 34, Lollipop, Nexus 6, and Nexus 9 launch on October 15, 2014. And now, be together, not the same. This episode of the Nexus Special is hosted by Ryan Rampersed and Ian Buck. Hey, Ian, did you hear about all this Nexus stuff? Well, funny you should say that, because you told me about it earlier today. Well, that's good. I'm glad uh, you're keeping up. <laughs> yeah, actually, I kind of forgot that today was the 15th, so I wasn't paying attention. You know, me too. I was asleep. I woke up, checked the Twitter, and Nexus, Nexus, Nexus all over the place. Mm. Mm-hmm. Now, the, the thing is, like, yeah, I, I did that kind of. I woke up and I just started reading news and stuff. But the news cycle doesn't start until, like, 3 o'clock my time zone. Right. So I kind of missed it all. Mm-hmm. Well... By waking up too early. I don't know if you missed that much. No. About two-thirds of the things that we found out today, we already knew. Yeah. Pretty mm-hmm. much. Right. Because rumors, you know? Yeah. Okay. Well, so leaks. what? So what, what are the things that we found out today? Well, there's, there's three, three major hardware things. And one major software thing, I that would say. That sounds good. Mm-hmm. So we got, we got three Nexus devices, the Nexus 6, Nexus 9, and Nexus Player. And to go with it, that's what it's called, right? Yes, that is what it's yes, called. Yes, good, good. And to go along with those is the Android 5.0 Lollipop. Lollipop. Which we are also already knew about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I promptly sent you a bunch of sucker emoji. Yes, that yeah. was pretty good. Uh-huh. Anytime. <laughs> Well, let's let's go down our list here. So uh, we can start with Android L's new name, Lollipop. Mm-hmm. What, what did we find out about it? Is there anything new that wasn't shown at I.O.? I don't think so, other than no. the name. Yeah, other, other than, than the name, the name we, are, we already knew pretty much everything. And, you know, people have been able to play around with it, essentially. Not, right. not in its final, final form, but mostly what it's going to be for several months now. Yeah, I was um, on the Nexus 6 page, which we'll talk about later. They have, Mm -hmm. like, a little interactive mock-up demo-y thing. And so one of the new things they've changed from the preview is how the snooze notifications thing works. It it looks way better now. Uh, Mm. So there's probably a lot of stuff in the new official release that is way nicer than in the previews. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also found out what devices it's coming for. Yes, so the Nexus 5, 7, 10, and Nexus 4. Um, we almost thought that it wasn't coming to the Nexus 4. Mm-hmm. But, because it wasn't it... on the page originally, but they updated it. It was just yeah. a mistake. Calm down. And I'm, I mean, f- for one, I'm really, really glad that they are, you know, keeping up on the Nexus 10. Because mm-hmm. that was that was pretty huge when it came out two years ago. And they're only now bringing out something that can, you know, we can argue is in its form factor. Right. Nine inch tablet versus ten inch tablet, not too different. No, and I think the bigger, uh, I think the uh, the the nine inch four by three tablet's even better anyway. But anyway, yeah, yeah. Uh, we also have uh, the official release date of the SDK, which is nice. That's on mm. the seventeenth. So, so that that's for third party. That's hardware for de- manufacturers. To... No, that's for developers. The SDK oh, okay. will let you actually use uh, the the real Android Studio and the real libraries. Hopefully, that will include all the support libraries for you know Android four point four and lower. But at least we'll be able to develop for Android five. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, wasn't half of the point of releasing the the preview was to let developers play around with some of the APIs and everything that were coming. Yes, that was part of the point, but the problem was they didn't release any support libraries. So that means mm. you couldn't build an app that would work with both 4.4 and lower and Android L. Like, it was one or the other, sort of, kind of. Weird. Mm-hmm. All right. And even for, like, normal people who don't have Nexuses, they've been noticing, you know, the this whole material design and everything that's that's coming through... Google's apps, yeah. you know, that have been updating to have that look. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know one person in particular, Sonia, freaked the heck out when Hangouts updated. Yep, Matt did too. came all green. And, like, I was most pissed off about the user change, or the, the user interface changes, you know, because I can't just kind of slide to the left anymore to get to, you know, from a conversation to the list of mm-hmm. conversations. Like, that was that was the best thing ever. Now I have to hit the down button to get rid of the keyboard and then yep. hit the back button to go back, you know. And 
but she's most concerned with, there's green everywhere. <laughs> What's going on? And I, and I had to explain, you know, oh, it's it's part of the whole material design and everything, you know, coming with the next version of Android. And, you know, being that you're on a, a Moto X, you'll probably get that update, you know, at some point in the future. Probably, and she's yeah. like, no, I won't, I won't update. And I was like, what? <laughs> Like the yeah. blasphemy. I asked Matt if he's excited about Android L, and he says, "No, not doing it." <laughs> so I think normal people are just reluctant in general to just update things like that. I mean, as long as the first version of Android L doesn't brick our phones, I think that Google's won this year. Oh, so you mean like iOS eight point zero or one, yeah, depending one on who you ask? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's talk about the uh, new phone then. Okay. So this is the Nexus 6. It's not the Nexus X or any other strange name. It literally just is the 6. Nah, because the Nexus X would have to be another 10-inch tablet. Oh, right, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they could have skipped so, a year. It could have just been a 7-inch phone. I mean, ev- everybody was talking about, oh, the the iPhone 6 Plus. It's huge. Yeah. It's a huge phone. Well, what okay. now? This is a huger phone. <laughs> huger phone, right. So we, you know, all the specs are what we heard about when, you know, we were getting all the rumors. You know, it has the mm-hmm. Snapdragon 805, which is lovely, although it's not a 64-bit processor. You know, it's not the future. It's no. the current. Uh, it has an amazing screen. You know, it's six-inch screen at QHD, which is uh, 1440p. Uh, that That means it has 493 PPI. That's insane. It's a pretty high density, just so you know. Um, a decent camera. Based Do we remember on... how many gigs of RAM it has? So, you know, that's a funny thing. So, the memory section around here, let's see, where am I? So, it doesn't actually say, like, memory. Huh. Oh, oh, well, so on the uh, status, on the on the Nexus 6 page from Google, they label memory as storage size. Which right. I, I feel is, like, the worst human thing to do. Yeah, if it, okay, so... I can understand that for normal people, the storage size is the number that they can, you know, that they know what it means right. and they can, but they, not you know, memory. That, that's the number that they care about. But the normal people aren't the ones who are going to be looking at the spec list right here. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So, mm. so the, uh, so, so the storage capacities are 32 and 64 gigs, which are good. So there's no 16 gig option, finally. That's good. That's very good. Okay. So then there's all that stuff. We have tons and tons of different, uh, bands for LTE and everything, so mm-hmm. your carrier is probably supported. Uh, interestingly, there's two colors: midnight blue and cloud white. There's no black. Huh. I mean, the the pictures look black enough for me. So this is the first time where I might not buy a blue phone. So you would want buy the white one instead? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So then I think the other interesting thing here in the specs section that we didn't know previously for sure is that they will be including ambient display on and off. Which is... I'm assuming the... active notifications. Okay, that's what they mean. Mm-hmm. Probably. And since... I mean, it is a Motorola phone, so... Right, and which is pretty cool, because they wouldn't include that unless it was baked into Android L in, in general, unless it's powered mm-hmm. by an app. So, I think that's pretty great. I agree. Mm-hmm. And the the other thing, of course, hopefully addressing all of Nexus 5's uh, user complaints is they've gone over 3,000 milliamp hours Woo-hoo! on their battery, and they, of course, include the uh, the fast charger, turbo, turbo charger, whatever Motorola wants to call it, mm-hmm. with the Nexus 6, and so that, uh, what was the number? In 15 minutes, you can charge it for like a six-hour time, yeah, yeah. yeah, which is pretty darn good. I mean, if I'm lucky enough to find an outlet for 15 minutes on campus, I'll be set, so great. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. <laughs> On the other hand, I want to live in a world where I don't have to charge my phone every six you know, hours for, for a six hour period. Yeah. yeah. Like, I would rather have a phone where I don't have to worry about it. I go to bed and I just charge it overnight. And it, it's not going to matter how fast it charges because if I give it a whole eight hours to charge, it had better be full. Right, exactly. I mean that. Yeah, definitely. Like, if a Tesla can charge overnight okay, on a normal well, outlet. Well, that's different. My phone should be able to too. <laughs> that is a very good expectation. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So let's let's talk about the pricing. The the odd pricing here. Ah uh, yes. So they've decided that this is for sure a premium phone. You know, none of this mid range nonsense. So they're pricing it at six hundred and fifty dollars for the sixty or thirty two <clears throat> gig version, and some indeterminately more 
amounts of money for the 64 gig. Yeah, we we were guessing 700 for that. So we'll probably go with that. It's, it seems likely. Mm-hmm. So 649. Ouch. Yeah, and I mean, given my experience with the 32 gig phone, I would probably go with the 64 gig phone. Really? Yeah, because okay. I store I store a lot of music oh. because I tend to be in areas where I'm not going to be able to stream it reliably from T-Mobile, and I mean that might change later in life. But right now, you know, I mean, if it's I, only I 50 bucks, music. it doesn't matter. I just uninstalled a game that was one gigabyte, so maybe that'll help. But mm-hmm. you know, recently with all of the pictures that I've been taking on vacation right. and everything, you know, I've I've been hurting for storage space. I understand That's your sure. pain. On yeah. the other hand, 32 gigs for me is fine. I dump my pictures whenever I run out of space and then promptly wipe mm-hmm. my phone. That's okay with me. I live in the Windows universe. I know what wiping is. I get it. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's only $50. I probably will bite that bullet, too. Yeah, if, 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 if it, it was $50 it, more. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, so we also have some interesting carrier news. So it's going to be on all of the major carriers in the U.S., AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, and allegedly, according to Google, Verizon. For the first well, time since the Galaxy Nexus. That's incredible. I know. And are they are they selling them through the uh, carriers as well this time, or well, are they just going going with just unlocked again? I don't know, because uh, when you go to the Nexus 6 page and you scroll all the way down, you'll see, get your new Nexus 6, available for pre-order starting in late October, and then it lists T-Mobile, AT&T, Verizon, U.S. Cellular, and Sprint, and Google Play. Mm-hmm. So presumably you'll be able to pre-order, or at least buy through, all of the major carriers. Now the real question is, will you get a, a special one for the Verizon? That's the real question. Well, Verizon's not the only one that uses whatever awful thing they call their radio technology. That's true, but Verizon's the only one who prohibits interop. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, pre-orders start uh, sometime in late October. I think it's on October 29th, so in a couple weeks. And then it'll be releasing to Carriers and Google Play sometime in November. So what I want to know is, are you going to get one? Because you have been complaining about your Nexus 5 nonstop, and we all know what you think of the Nexus 4. Piece of crap. Piece of crap. (laughs) I'm working on it. I'm working on it. You're you're working on getting a Nexus 6? Yes, yes, I'm working on it. All right, all yeah. right. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in November. I hope you grow some big hands. You know, I'm going to need a bag. Just, just, you're going to have to grow a pair. Just, just grow a pair of bags, right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that yeah. other hardware news. Well, that other hardware news, well, you know, the Nexus 5, in fact, didn't get updated today, much to everyone's dismay, but it is still going to be kept on the lineup, apparently. Mm. Which so, is good. you can have your 300 and... Or three hundred and ninety nine dollar phone, or you can have your six hundred and forty nine dollar phone. You pick. Yeah, it, it, very very smart of them to not get rid of the Nexus Five because it's definitely in a different class than the Nexus Six. You know, like the Nexus Five clearly just replaced the Nexus Four. Right. They they were similar in price. They were similar in size. You know, they they performed the same functions except the Nexus 5 just did it way better for the price that you were spending. Right. So it, it wouldn't make sense for somebody to even buy the Nexus 4 after the Nexus 5 came out. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the Nexus 5, still an acceptable phone for most people, uh, you know, d- different size class, different price class than the Nexus 6. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. So you can look forward to getting that for the same price in the future. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, tell me about this new tablet. Well, speaking of different size classes, they are moving on up to the 9-inch tablet area. This time, they are going with HTC, as we suspected, as we pretty much knew already. Um, This one is going to have a 4x3 uh, screen, which is not typical for Nexuses up till now, but Pretty typical, I would say, for, for you know, the 10-inch tablet area. Yeah, for iPads. I get it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was avoiding saying the words. Um, I mean, the, the you know, we, we knew that it was going to have a Tegra K1, that it was probably going to be the 64-gig version. Pretty awesome. That's the future right there. Yep. Um, we didn't, I don't think that we knew, knew what the price was going to be, but now we know. It's uh, $400 for the 16-gig version. 32 gig version is 479, and if you want to have LTE, then uh, on the 32 gig version, then you have to spend 600. dollars 
You know, that's not a big surprise. I think that's fine. Yeah. Because I think it's um, like, what, 629 for the equivalent iPad with LTE? Something like that, 629? I'm not sure. Yeah, something like that. So what I'm really curious about being a gamer and, and knowing that the, you know, the Shield tablet mm-hmm. can do this whole Twitch streaming thing, is that a feature that comes with any Tegra K1 device or is it just the NVIDIA specific one? That is a really good question. That's because, like, it seems like it's something that's that's hardware limited, and so if we have that hardware in a device, can I get it to work? Because that would, like, I, I'm actually thinking about getting either the Nexus Nine or the the Shield tablet, and I don't know which one I want to get. Yeah, that is a pretty tough choice. I mean, you might even, uh, I mean, if you wait long enough, you're gonna have to deal with the M1 or something. In terms of the next chip yeah. from NVIDIA? Mm-hmm. Okay. Because they did the K1 this year, right? Yes. Mm. And so then the M1, which would be the Maxwell, because we already know they right. just released the whole Maxwell lineup, that will be next year probably. It never occurred to me that that's where the K came from. Yeah, Kepler. From Kepler. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Turns out. So. And for colors, of course, we have uh, white and black. No, 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 then... no, no, no. And then lunar, sand. Lunar white and indigo oh, black. Fine. Fine. And just sand. Just sand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you people and you're just indigo I'm black. sorry, I'm being a plebeian here. But like... but it's not it's not blue. It's black actually. It's I don't <laughs> I don't understand where the indigo comes from. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So as for uh specs, they the screen has a what they're calling Q VGA. It's a twenty forty eight by fifteen thirty six display. Um, and of course, I, man, I can't just look at that and know what PPI yeah, that is. No idea. It's <laughs> high enough. Whatever. Yeah, probably high yeah, enough. Yeah. Uh, that yeah, that's not even a thing that we need to worry about in this day and age. No, not really. Like, nobody, nobody should care. No. Um, let's see. I think they have uh, two gigs of RAM, so we actually know that number. Yeah, unlike and that phone, which we don't know. The battery life is supposed to last uh, nine hours. Though I'm sure we'll find out more specifics once it enters the real world. Yeah, we'll find out that it lasts less. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. Uh huh. Kind of a shame that the entry level storage is 16. Yeah. For a tablet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we needed to move beyond that. Yeah, but we didn't. Instead, we got a whole metal body. Now, one thing that is interesting that they're doing here is they're including a keyboard with it. Yes. Are they? Or is that, or is that sold separately? I assume that was sold separately. I don't, I don't. Okay. Where, where did I read about that in this, in this article? I don't know. And there's a real. Ah, uh, here we go. Ah, uh, no, they're they're selling it separately. Yeah. Never mind. Uh, the I real spoke que- too soon. The real question is then, does it cost one hundred and twenty nine dollars, like the Surface <laughs> Pro keyboard attachments? For, you know. Yeah, but you know that was a premium keyboard right yeah, there. Sure it is. <laughs> yeah. We'll we'll see about that. I don't know. Like like you and I have decided that tablets. What's the point? Yes, though the whole streaming PC games to you know the Shield tablet and being able to stream mobile games to Twitch from the Shield tablet is really appealing to me at least. Right. Yeah. Definitely. I would almost do that for Guild Wars, but it won't never happen anyway. Yeah. I don't know. I I I use the Nexus Seven occasionally. Just because it's there, not because I want to. And because it has all those updated home row icons. Oh, I love those icons. Those are my favorite. Like, the best part. Speaking of which, do we know if the 2012 Nexus 7s are getting Android L? Or is it just the 2013 ones? We don't know that, because they only said the Nexus 7. They didn't say which the Nexus 7. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't the first one. Because that Taker 3? Garbage. (laughs) <laughs> yeah that's we can the, blame that all the, day that's for you andrew bailey <laughs> so we have one more piece of oh wait before we go there uh this is coming officially on november 3rd this uh nexus 6 pre-orders start on uh, october 17th yep which is friday so just a couple of days away yeah. yeah yeah i don't know we'll see so by the time you listen they might be all gone i i, I doubt it who knows i doubt it I don't think they're Google. Prob- they're probably going to sell like hotcakes. I don't. Frankly. I think Google has learned their lesson, and then they'll have stock in some variety. They have three colors, two sizes. They'll they'll fi- they'll make it work. 
I mean, this is the, this is clearly the biggest news of this week. Nobody else is going to release a tablet the Nexus, tomorrow. The Live. <laughs> okay, well, uh, we're not the Verge, so let's not do that. Uh, yeah, no. Let's talk about the Nexus Player, the strangest thing yeah. I've ever seen. So this was, I think, the only thing that we weren't expecting. I was never expecting a week. round Nexus. I mean, we. I'm surprised that nobody saw this coming, what with Android TV being announced, you know, alongside Android L, Lollipop. But, yeah, this is uh, this is the first device that I think is coming out that's actually going to be running Android uh, TV. TV. Yep. It's basically a Fire TV. It is, like, basically, even, but it's round. Even, like, the, the remote looks just like it and you talk like, to the remote in the same way exactly yeah it has it has a uh, um a controller that looks just like the controller for the fire tv you know the the only differences i guess would be you know the software ecosystem but the, the remote yeah. has the word nexus stamped into it what no it says asus no the remote oh sorry the remote right the remote yeah the controller yeah, i, was, I don't I was know what's the going controller. on yeah i don't know what's going on with that that controller doesn't look too bad really yeah. Okay, so what do we know about this strange little player? I mean, really, everything that we need to know about it, we found out at Google I.O. this summer. Sort of. You know, because the important things about a set-top box are what streaming apps are going to be available on it. Is there anything else special that is going to make me want to buy it? Does the interface suck? And that's about it. I mean, I haven't personally used Android TV, so I can't say for sure. Although, from what exactly. I've seen, it looks pretty, but that doesn't really say a lot. Yeah, and is like it's got it's got pretty much all of the major players on it, uh, as far as I, I think, can tell. Except, ooh, actually, I don't I don't remember if we've heard about and uh, Amazon no. Instant Video. Amazon doesn't exist in the real world. No. Well, I mean, it's it's on Android phones now. Sort of loosely. So, what do you mean loosely? Like, it's there. I have it on my phone. I could watch movies if I want to right now. Yeah. I'm not going to because I'm on mobile data. Good. But, you know. So, so like, let, let's. What do, you, what do you know about the specs of this little device? It's kind of an interesting spec set. Well, I know that I could use it to play Ultimate Frisbee. Well, you could. I don't think that it would <laughs> stay in the air very long. Yeah. Well, the specs are kind of interesting. For some reason, Google thought it would be really handy to have a quad-core Atom processor in this. That's odd. Yeah, and I've never really... So, I don't remember. Does Atom run ARM? Mm-hmm. Or is it x86? I think it's x86. So, that means they decided, for some reason, to put an x86 chip in a TV box. On, I, I don't understand. I don't get it. Maybe... Oof. Yeah, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And so it can do HDMI out, of course. That's what the point of this device is. Yep. Yep. It has really nice Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi AC with 2x2 MIMO, which is good for streaming in and out of it if you're playing games with other people. Uh, yeah, just uh, that's it. Now, do we know the price? Because I haven't seen a price. Yeah, $100. $100? That's not too bad. Yeah. So what? We have a Nexus, I mean a Chromecast, which is 35 ish and then this, mm-hmm. which is a hundred ish. Yeah, basically does everything the Chromecast does, but also can play like Android games on um, a television. I wonder if so. Like my my parents have figured out what the Chromecast is. They figured out how it works. They get it. Mm-hmm. But I wonder mm-hmm. if there are people who don't get how to use the app to make it go to the screen. You know, some people are just too old to figure out that you can start something on your phone and it'll just move up to the bigger screen through Chromecast. So maybe for some people this might be really nice. Yeah, and so recently Chris Plant wrote an article about why the best device for hooking up to your television isn't a set-top box at all. It's just, you know, some old PC that you have lying around. And it is a problem that I have been mulling over for a while and pretty much came to the same conclusion. I it you literally just duplicated the link. Oh, you're a horrible person. Take a look at that. <laughs> and like, you know, because we always run into no matter what company makes this set top box, the problem that we run into is are all of my the, the services that I use available on it? And the answer is no. Unless you're on a PC. That's the only platform that you can guarantee everything will be available for. Now, now the real question is, on a PC, on Linux, is everything available? No. Right. So you got to run Windows. Right. Yes! Which you're likely doing already. Oh, yeah! 
Lovely if you just have an old PC. Big Windows around. fan. Woohoo! Yeah. But yeah, like, and it, he also brings up, like, you know, the problem of they're, they're trying to reimagine, you know, the whole user interface and everything and make it more simple, but, like, people have to relearn how to use it then, and everybody knows how to use just, like, a mouse and a keyboard, you know, and you just get a wireless ones. And, exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm not sold on the fact, on, on the idea of mouse and keyboard being the end result, right. you know, the easiest thing for us to do in, ter- in, in order to control our television, but... You know, but it's funny because that's exactly what I've done for years. My uh, ever since that Windows uh, Seven party here in two thousand nine, yeah, I remember that. We've had a wireless keyboard and a wireless mouse in our living room, powering the computer that's always been attached to that computer. And then even down here in the studio viewing room, the room outside of the studio, we have uh, a mouse and a keyboard that are wireless attached to the server, so that we can use it to watch TV. And it really is just easier to do that than it is to do yeah. pretty much anything else. And the, the yeah, the one thing that it definitely has going for it is I can actually type. Yeah. And it doesn't suck. Right. So I don't know, like Android TV, the only thing that it brings to the table that nobody else can do, including really, you know, just a, a simple computer hooked up to a television, is playing Android games. But what I, but, I there are there maybe there aren't Android games now, but there might be in the future that make use of it. But I just don't know if I care. Yeah. I mean, I would much rather play my PC games on a television than play Android games on a television. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if I'm really sold on it. I I would still rather just have, uh, you know, a PC hooked up and then maybe a Chromecast just for like, oh, I've found something on YouTube on my phone. I want to put it up on the computer, on yeah. the TV. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, and I, not have I, to worry about I it. I am sold on the processor, so I'll, I'll just buy it, take the <laughs> processor out, and use it myself. Right. Yeah, because you can do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's a thing that normal people do. Right, totally. Oh, and I, I suppose if somebody, you know, is listening to this podcast and they're curious about where all of these links are that we've been talking about, you know, where they can pre-order this crap, they can probably find it at uh, thenexus.tv slash ns34. Well, that's pretty insightful. Yeah. Hmm. So, out of all the announcements you've seen this week, how good was this one? I mean... They weren't announcements. They were confirmations of of things that we already do. <laughs> oh, that's so so bad. It's so true, though. I like, know. what did we what did we learn? Oh, it costs this much money. You know? Oh, there's a hockey puck. Like the hockey puck was the only well, you thing. Know that what? We found out about. So what you can do is you can buy a Nexus Six, use it as the hockey stick with the Nexus <laughs> Player as the hockey puck, and then you set up three Nexus Nines mm. as a goal. As the goal. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. I think that'll only cost roughly two thousand dollars. No problem. Yeah, no problem. We can do it. Yeah, yeah, sure. So Ryan, where can we find you on the internet? Well you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course on my blog, which is where I publish things throughout the week and day, all usually forming some show notes for a podcast later sometime. Yeah. hmm How about you? I, you can usually find me on Google+. Plus. I do a lot of things there, sharing interesting things that I find, and on my blog, ianrbuck.blogspot.com. Well, that sounds good. Thanks yeah. for coming on to talk about the new Nexus things. Yeah, no problem. I just had to walk through the freezing air to get to here. And dodge all the cars that are running around on the streets. Oh, yeah. The, the sundry cars. Yes, yes, those. Well, have a good one. 